Hi, my name is Stanley Warren. I grew up in, George, in Savannah, Georgia area. Uh, growing up, I never really knew exactly what I wanted to be as I grew up into, as an adult. Um, so I joined the Air Force and for the past 10 years, I spent that time as a project manager and an inventory manager. Uh, I recently uh, separated from the military and then I joined this data analytics boot camp. Uh, I love data analytics because I always believe that the best way to get answers to your problems is with data. Granted, there's nothing wrong with people using their personal opinions or life experiences, but I feel like sometimes our uh, upbringings kind of cloud our judgment on, you know, what the true answers are. Uh, I use data analytics all the time in my personal time, like uh, when I'm debating sports with people, I'll pull up advanced numbers and this and that just to prove my point, because sometimes people may just like, like a certain player over other just because they like their style. And I'm not saying there is anything wrong with that, but you know, it just helps me further prove my point if I have like sources and other things to back me up. Um, my project is on father involvement and their improvements over time. And also uh, just basic characteristics of fathers and what they do on a regular basis. Uh, one of the things that I feel I debate a lot with people is that the modern father on average isn't doing what they're supposed to do. Uh, I hear that quite often in my personal life as well as online. And my biggest thing was that, you know, I've looked at this data quite often over the years, even before this course. And I've always known that, you know, most fathers are doing what they're supposed to do. We always hear about the absent fathers, unfortunately, and we hear about them so much that people think they are the majority. Uh, but I'll get off my own personal tangent and I'll start my presentation on, and show you the data that I found. Okay, right here, I have uh, a bunch of characteristics listed on the left. Range of, I have different age ranges, their marital status, uh, if they're cohabiting or just not currently married or cohabiting with the partner. I also have some education as in high school diploma or some college. I have also some ethnicities listed as well. And they're also split in four different sections. I have uh, those that are not doing anything at all, those that are doing uh, this particular task one week, once a week or less, those that are doing it several times a week, and those that are doing it every single day. Uh, this one, this data set right here is about fathers that bathe or clothe their children, those under five, uh, on a weekly basis. As you can see right here at our everyday column, about 55 to 65 percent, uh, depending on what characteristics is pulled up, oops, excuse me, uh, are doing this every single day with their children. And then you get over here to several times a week. We range about 25 to 35%, give or take. And then rounded it down, you add these around in this area, you probably get the last about 15 to 20% of the fathers that are left. So as you can see, uh, my, my first example that about 70 to 80% of fathers are doing what they're supposed to do in this regard, as far as being with their children every day and uh, bathing them. And uh, this data is also from the U.S. Census. I wanted to make sure I got the, you know, the most accurate data possible. Similar to uh, the last data set, uh, my characteristics are the same. I just did a different chart to give you a better view of like the big difference of what majority of fathers are doing and then the minority. Uh, so as you can see here, those that are eating with their children every single day range uh, around the 70% range, give or take for the most part, but all of them are well over 60%. I think my lowest one is this one here at 63%. And then, as I said before, uh, next is, you know, uh, every se several times a week as well, uh, they are doing about 30%, give or take. So again, uh, in this category as well, about 70% of fathers are doing what they're supposed to on a regular basis. And then you can see the numbers drop significantly for those who are doing it once a week or just not at all. So let's get to one of the biggest points of my presentation is the absent father that I feel like is, uh, is heard quite often. 
and debates and all uh, from people in general. Uh, so absent fathers in general only account for 20% of all fathers. Uh, even though that is still high, I, that's not as high as you know you might personally hear. Uh, absent fathers, some of their characteristics are uh, they're likely they're more likely to have never been married to the mother. Uh, they're less likely to have a college degree, and they're more likely to be living with one or more parents. Uh, and absent fathers, 80% uh, of the absent fathers ne never married the mother. So most of these absent fathers came, you know, outside of the marriage. And then the other 20% would be the, the divorced fathers that became absent after the fact. <clears throat> So this, this data set right here is uh, those that are reading to their children between the ages of five and 18. Uh, as you can see, this one is not as great as the other data sets, but still a good portion of the fathers are reading to their children on a regular basis. Uh, we got between 25 to 30% are doing it every single day. Another 30%, 30 to 35% are doing it several times a week. And then the, the last about 40%, 30 to 40% are either doing it once a week or less or not at all. So in this category, you could definitely say there could be some improvement uh, because they're not doing it uh, on a more frequent basis. But uh, overall, you could still see the vast majority of fathers are, uh, you know, spending time with their children, doing different aspects with their children. Uh, this right here is where I got my data set from. So all the other charts and data that you saw in my previous slides, I actually originally pulled them from a data set that looks like this. As I said before, this is from the U.S. Census. Uh, this is the most up-to-date. They don't have anything for like our current, uh, our current like 2022, because it takes a while for them to present all this data. So this was created back in 2013, but I have another set that I'll show you later on that'll show the trend and improvements that we've had over the years. Um, as I was saying, this one, this particular data set right here is actually about uh, the homework, the amount of time they spend doing homework with their children on a regular basis. So it's still set up similar to how I have it in my data sets. As you can see, the ones that are doing it every day are ranging between 25 to 35%. And next we have several times a week, another 25 to 30%. And then we have our uh, once a week or less and then those that are not at all. Now, one, now let me get to another data set that I have, but in my Python. Uh, right here, I have another data set that I created in Python. Uh, I know this table is very simple. Uh, I was actually going to expand on this a lot more, but I ended up running out of time. Uh, I was going to end up showing uh, right here, as you can see, I have fatherless homes and the percentage of uh, these uh, the negative events that happen when children are in a fatherless home. And I was going to have another uh, table showing the impact on fathers' homes impact of those that have a father, such as uh, better grades, um, you know, maybe more income in the future when they're adults, et cetera. Unfortunately, I couldn't find large enough data sets to support the different arguments I was trying to make, make on these yet. So I didn't want to include anything that I didn't have like concrete proof of or, you know, good data for. Uh, but what I do have right here is a few, as I said earlier, uh, you know, negative events that happen in the percentages of those children that are living in a fatherless home. 63% uh, of suicides happen uh, when the father, when they're living in a fatherless home. 90% uh, of the runaways, which is very shocking to me, uh, come from a fatherless home. 85% uh, of those with behavioral disorder, 90% uh, of the rapists, 71% of the high school dropouts, and 70% of those in a drug rehab center all come from children that are living in a fatherless home. And last, I wanna show the improvements that are made. Uh, this data set right here is actually from Pew Research. Um, in 1965, on average, fathers worked 46 hours a week. They did about four hours of household chores and two and a half hours. Again, that is uh, on a per weekly basis. Uh, today's fathers, uh, we work about three hours less, but 
uh, we've significantly increased our household work and child care in the home. Uh, so as you can see that there's been also major improvements on our side as in the, the house housework and the child care that, you know, was not there. Now, maybe, as I was saying earlier, maybe some of the stigmatism came from, you know, fathers in this time period where they were not doing much help outside of just, you know, working and paying the bills. But as you can see, there's been massive improvements uh, in this regard, and it, it continues to improve. There's some newer data from different websites that are showing these two categories increasing even more. Um, but I trust, you know, the U.S. Census and Pew the most, so that's why I prefer to use this data set. But I'm sure in a few years, uh, you know, one of those two will uh, provide some more data, uh, more recent data to help uh, support more arguments. Uh, and I thank you for your time for listening to my presentation. Uh, have a good day. <clears throat>